how to replace an igniter on a pellet grill. If you're watching this video, you're probably dealing with an igniter that's burnt out. But before you go and buy the original metal tube ignition rod, let's check out the results from this test. So we did a little test to see how much faster an igniter made out of silicon nitrate would be compared to your standard metal tube ignition rod that comes with a lot of the older and entry level pellet grills. For this test, I used a Z Grills Typhoon, but don't worry, you don't have to have a Z Grills pellet grill to make this igniter work. Heat Founder sells all kinds of igniters for all different brands of pellet grills. I know for a fact that they sell them for Traeger and Pit Boss. Either right now or real soon, you will be able to go to your local Lowe's if you have a Pit Boss and purchase an igniter right there. And these igniters also fit in any Louisiana grills too. I also know that some of the newer Pit Boss models currently have a Heat Founder igniter in them. First thing that you wanna do when you're changing out an igniter on a pellet grill is give it a good deep cleaning, especially around the fire pot. You wanna keep this clean. And I also know that a lot of you that are changing out your igniter rod have a very well seasoned pit. So the cleaner, the better. I made this test very simple and it was just really to see how much faster these new type of igniters are compared to the old ones. We made sure that the fire pot was was clean and there was nothing in it from the start. We started each test on smoke and at the same time we hit a stopwatch so we could get an accurate time when we started to see some flames. The original ignition rod, it took around five minutes before we started to see some fire. But man, did I have to deal with a ton of white smoke during that startup procedure. After it was all lit up, we went immediately into the shutdown mode. Safety first, make sure you unplug that pellet grill so you're not dealing with any electrified parts. Take out the four number eight screws that hold that fire pot in that auger channel. If you lose one, they're typically just a number eight screw that you can get at any local hardware store. Ask me how I know. Push the fire pot over to the right so it gets past that auger shaft. You might have to turn it left or right so that igniter rod misses that shaft and you can pull out the fire pot. Now just wiggle it back and forth until it breaks free so you can get it all the way out. For most pellet grills, you are going to have to remove the bottom cover underneath the hopper. This is so you can access the wiring harness. If you're installing an igniter from Heat Founder, make sure that you're putting that fixing ring on correctly. And with some of the newer igniters, you will find an isolating washer that you'll put on too. Heat Founder also sends you a wire that you can use to connect the new igniter to the old one. Wrap it around like a twist tie, but I also go over the top of that with some electrical tape. The smoother the better because you do have to fish this through that auger cover back into the wire harness. Once you have the old metal tube ignition rod pulled all the way through, I always like to hook up that new igniter to the fire pot. This way I don't have to worry about accidentally pulling it all the way out. Unplug the old igniter from the wire harness, remove the electrical tape, and in my case, that wire that I tied them together, then plug in the new igniter. But before you tidy up any of the loose wires by connecting them with some wire ties, I suggest that you leave that cover off and run a test first. You wanna make sure that your igniter is working before you button it all back up. It's time to plug in the pellet grill. Obviously, I followed the same exact steps on this test for the new silicon nitride igniter. But this igniter was red hot almost immediately. But the most impressive part about this test was that those pellets lit in about two minutes. And to be honest, if a few of those pellets would have landed on the igniter instead of going to the far end of that fire pot, it would lit up even quicker. Let's just take a handful of pellets and throw it right in the fire pot, right above that igniter, and see how fast it takes for this to light up. Our stopwatch is set. Turn it on and turn it on. I can already smell it starting to smoke. And I think you might be able to actually see a little bit of smoke in there. Getting a little bit more buildup. See what I'm talking about? There we are, just 
over a minute. And yeah, I got a little smoke in my eyes. Tearing up a little bit, but obviously that's tears of joy. Shut her back down and go into the cool down cycle. I said earlier, is it worth getting a silicon nitride ignition? Yeah, yeah it is. The proof's in the pudding. Another bonus is that they're also rated for 100,000 ignitions. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find out more information about Heat Founders igniters. And then you can decide, do you want an igniter that takes five minutes or an igniter that takes two or less? Well, I suppose that's all I got. Roll the nation.